It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. On arrival, you were subjected to a full body search. You could not have jewellery, matches, cigarettes, not even chocolate, because of the possible reaction of the sugar with the chemicals. You worked 12 hour shifts, two weeks on days and two weeks on nights. No allowance was made for mothers. Food rationing affected everybody at the time and the munitions workers were no exception. They took you to the canteen, you were fed, and you were fed a strict ration. You were all probably, if you were working on these, you would be given um, carbonated fizzy water at lunchtime because you inhaled it and you got the smell in your stomach, it made your stomach go really queasy, so you had carbonated water to settle your stomach. Everybody, when you worked in them, um, were given at least a pint of milk a day because you needed to get the calcium back to stop your teeth falling out. The Mayor of Hereford declared in 1916 the city was to be invaded by women, the like of which the city has never seen before. Girls lived in hostels all over Hereford and lodgings were provided by local people. The women's police and women's patrol officers were established to save the women from their own folly. Their aim was to rescue fallen women caused by high wages and overexcitement. Gabrielle West, employed by the factory as a policewoman, noted that she had never seen such a wild, unruly set of hooligans in her life. She reported that some of the hostels were very cheap and rough so that only the roughest of the rough will come to work in the factories. She put in for a transfer. Keep the home fires burning While your hearts are yearning Though your lads are far away They dream of home There's a silver line. Dark cloud shine. 